Hi all, welcome to another session of International Business and today we would be discussing World Trade Organization, WTO. So now first question arises, what is the World Trade Organization? It was created in 1995. The World Trade Organization is actually an international institution that oversees the global trade rules among nations. We have already discussed what is global trade, the imports and exports of goods and services, right? Now, it superseded the 1947 General Agreement on Tariffs and Trades, that is GATT, created in the wake of World War II. The WTO is based on agreements signed by the majority of the world's trading nations. The main function of the organization is to help producers of goods and services, exporters and importers protect and manage their businesses. As of 2021, the WTO has 164 member countries with Liberia and Afghanistan the most recent members having joined in July 2016 and there are 23 observer countries. If we talk about the details of the WTO, where is it located? It is in Geneva, Switzerland. It was established on 1st January 1995. It was created by Uruguay Round Negotiations from 1986 to 94. There are 164 members representing 98% of the world trade as of September 2018. It has 197 million Swiss francs budget for 2020. The secretariat staff is 630 members. The head is Roberto Azivado, the director general. What are the functions of World Trade Organization? The WTO's overriding objective is to help trade flow smoothly, freely and predictably. How does it do that? It does that by administering trade agreements, acting as forum for trade negotiations, settling trade disputes, reviewing national trade policies, building the trade capacity of developing economies, cooperating with other international organizations. We have already covered it in up in parts that WTO has 164 members accounting for 98% of the world trade, a total of 22 countries. Decisions are made by the entire membership. This is typically by consensus. A majority vote is also possible, but it has never been used in WTO and was extremely rare under the WTO's predecessor that was GATT. The WTO agreements have been ratified in all members' parliaments. The WTO's top level decision making body is ministerial conference which meets usually every two years. Now the general council that is below the, this is the general council which is normally ambassadors and heads of the delegation based in Geneva but sometimes officials sent from member capital which meets several times a year in the Geneva headquarters. The General Council also meets as the Trade Policy Review Body and the Dispute Settlement Body. At the next level, the Goods Council, Services Council and Intellectual Properties TRIPS Council reports to the General Council. Numerous specialized committees, working groups and working parties deal with the individual agreements and other areas such as environment, development, membership applications and regional trade agreements. The WTO Secretariat. It is based in Geneva and has around 630 staff members and is headed by Director General. It does not have a branch office outside Geneva. Since decisions are taken by the WTO members, the Secretariat does not itself have a decision-making role. The Secretariat's main duty are to supply technical support for the various councils, committees and the ministerial conferences, to provide technical assistance for developing economies and to analyze world trade and to explain WTO activities to the public and media. The Secretariat also provides some forms of legal assistance in the dispute settlement process and advises governments wishing to become members of the WTO.
The annual budget contributed by the members is roughly 197 million Swiss francs. So this is how the WTO looks like. There is this general council and um, there is, uh, uh, it is plurilateral, that is information technology agreement committee, then council for trade in goods, then council for trade related aspects of intellectual property rights, that is TRIPS, then council for trade in services, then uh, trade in civil aircraft, then negotiations committee, then there is appellate body where appeals can be made then general council meeting as trade policy review body then general council meeting as dispute settlement body and there are different committees and working parties on market access on trade and financial services and then there was this doha development agenda which included special sessions on services council trips council dispute settlement etc the wto is essentially an alternative dispute or meditation entity that upholds the international rules of trade among nations. The organization provides a platform that allows member governments to negotiate and resolve trade issues with each other. The WTO's main focus is to provide open lines of communication concerning trade between its members. If we take an example here, the WTO has lowered trade barriers and increased trade among member countries. On the other hand, it has also maintained trade barriers when it makes sense to do so in the global context. Therefore, the WTO attempts to provide negotiation mediation that benefits the global economy. Once Negotiations are complete and an agreement is in place. The WTO then offers to interpret that agreement in the event of a future dispute. All WTO agreements include a settlement process whereby the organization legally conducts neutral conflict resolution. How to understand the WTO? So, with no negotiation, mediation or resolution, would be possible without the foundational World Trade Organization agreements. Now, what are these agreements? These agreements are set that the legal ground rules for international commerce that the WTO oversees. They bind a country's government to a set of constraints that must be observed when setting future trade policies. These agreements protect producers, importers and exporters while encouraging world governments to meet specific social and environmental standards. What are these global trade rules? Global trade rules of trade provides assurance and stability. Consumers and producers know they can enjoy secure supplies and greater choice of the finished products components, raw materials, and services they use. Producers and exporters know foreign markets will remain open to them. This leads to a more prosperous, peaceful, and accountable economic world. Decisions in the WTO are typically taken by the consensus among all members and they are ratified by members' parliaments. Trade frictions are channeled into the World Trade Organization's dispute settlement process where the focus is on interpreting agreements and commitments and how to ensure that members' trade policies confirm with them. That way, the risk of disputes spilling over into political or military conflict is reduced. By lowering trade barriers through negotiations among member governments, the WTO system also breaks down other barriers between people and trading economies. At the heart of the system, known as the multilateral trading system, are the World Trade Organization's agreements negotiated and signed by a large majority of 
द वर्ल्ड ट्रेडिंग इकोनॉमीज एंड रेटिफाइड इन देयर पार्लियामेंट्स दीज अग्रीमेंट्स आर द लीगल फाउंडेशंस फॉर ग्लोबल ट्रेड वेरी असेंशियली दे आर कॉन्ट्रैक्ट्स गारंटीइंग डब्ल्यू टी ओ मेंबर्स इम्पॉर्टेंट ट्रेड राइट्स दे ऑल्सो बाइंड गवर्नमेंट्स टू कीप देयर ट्रेड पॉलिसीज ट्रांसपेरेंट एंड प्रिडिक्टेबल विच इज टू एवरीबडीज बेनिफिट द अग्रीमेंट्स provide a stable and transparent framework to help producers of goods and services exporters and importers conduct their business the goal is to improve the welfare of the peoples of the wto members what are trade negotiations we have seen that so the world trade organization when it came into being in 1995 uh, it is the youngest of international organizations and as we have talked about the successor has been the gatt uh, so while the wto is relatively young the multilateral trading system that was originally set up under the gatt is over 70 years old the past 70 years have seen an exceptional growth in world trade merchandise exports have grown on an average by 6% annually this growth in trade has been a powerful engine for overall economic expansion and on average trade has grown by 1.5 times more than the global economy each year total exports in 2016 were 250 times the level of 1948 the general agreement on trades and tariffs and the world trade organization have helped to create a very strong and prosperous trading system contributing to this unprecedented growth the system was developed through a series of trade negotiations or rounds held under general agreement of trades and tariffs the first rounds dealt mainly with tariff reductions but later negotiations included other areas also such as anti dumping and non tariff measures the 1986 to 94 round that is also known as uruguay round led to the wto's creation the negotiations did not end there in 1997 an agreement was reached on telecommunication services with 69 governments agreeing to wide ranging liberalization measures that went beyond those agreed in the uruguay round in the same year 40 governments successfully concluded negotiations for tariff free trade in information technology products and 70 members concluded a financial services deal covering more than 95% of trade in banking insurance securities and financial information in 2000 New talks started on agriculture and services. These were incorporated into a broader work program, the Doha Development Agenda, launched at the fourth WTO ministerial conference in Doha, Qatar, in November two thousand one. The new work program included negotiations and other work. on non agricultural tariffs trade and the environment wto rules on anti dumping and subsidies trade facilitation transparency in government procurement intellectual property and a range of issues raised by developing economies as difficulties they face in implementing world trade organization agreements 
negotiations on these and other topics have resulted in major updates to the WTO rule book in recent years. A revised government procurement agreement adopted at WTO's 8th ministerial conference in 2011 expanded the coverage of the original agreement by an estimated 100 billion US dollars a year. At the 9th ministerial conference in Bali in 2013, WTO members stuck the agreement on trade facilitation which aims to reduce border delays by slashing red tape. When fully implemented, this agreement, the first multilateral accord reached at the WTO, will cut trade costs by more than 14% and will lift global exports by as much as 1 trillion US dollars per year. The expansion of the Information Technology Agreement concluded at the 10th Ministerial Conference in Nairobi in 2015 eliminated tariffs on an additional 200 IT products valued at over 1.3 trillion US dollars per year. Another outcome of the conference was a decision to abolish agricultural export subsidies, fulfilling one of the key targets of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal on Zero Hunger. Most recently, an amendment to the WTO's Intellectual Property Agreement entered into force in 2017, easing poor economies' access to affordable medicines. The same year, saw the Trade Facilitation Agreement enter into the force as well. So let us see something uh, more about WTO agreements. Let's throw some light on that. Because how can you ensure that trade is as fair as possible and as open as it is practical by negotiating rules and very importantly, abiding by those. The WTO's rules, the agreements, are the result of negotiations between the members. The current set is largely the outcome of 1986-94 Uruguay Round negotiations, which included a major revision of the original General Agreement on Trade Tariffs and Trade. The Uruguay Round created new rules for dealing with trade in services and intellectual property and new procedures for dispute settlement. The complete set runs to some 30,000 pages consisting of about 30 agreements and separate commitments. These are known as schedules made by individual members in specific areas such as lower tariffs and services market opening. Through these agreements, WTO members operate a non-discriminatory trading system that spells out their rights and their obligations. Each member receives guarantees that its exports will be treated fairly and consistently in other members' markets. Each promises to do the same for imports into its own market. The system also gives developing economies some flexibility in implementing their commitments. In terms of goods, it all began with trade in goods. From 1947 to 94, the GATT was the forum for negotiating lower tariffs and other trade barriers. The text of General Agreement on Trade and Tariffs spelled out important rules, particularly non-discrimination. Since 1995, the Marrakesh Agreement establishing the WTO and its annexes, included the upgraded um, GATT, has become the WTO's umbrella agreement. 
it has annexes dealing with specific sectors relating to goods such as agriculture and with specific issues such as product standards subsidies and actions taken against dumping a recent significant addition was the trade facilitation agreement which entered into force in 2017 let's come to the services sector banks insurance firms telecommunication companies tour operators hotel chains and transport companies looking to do business abroad enjoy the same principles of more open trade that originally only applied to trade in goods these principles appear in the general agreement on trade in services that it's gats the world trade organization members have also made individual commitments under the gats stating which of their service sectors they are willing to open to foreign competition and how open those markets are let's see what about intellectual property the wto's intellectual property agreement contains rules for trade in ideas and creativity the rules state how copyrights patents trademarks geographical names used to identify products industrial designs and undisclosed information such as trade secrets are intellectual properties and they should be protected at any cost when trade is involved how does wto settles the disputes the world trade organization's procedure for resolving trade conflicts under the dispute settlement understanding is vital for enforcing the rules and therefore for ensuring that trade flows smoothly governments bring disputes to the world trade organization if they think their rights under wto agreements are being infringed the judgments by specifically appointed independent experts are based on interpretations of the agreements and individual member commitments the system encourages members to settle their differences through consultation with each other if this proves to be unsuccessful they can follow a stage by stage procedure that includes the possibility of a ruling by a panel of experts and the chance to appeal the ruling on legal grounds confidence in the system is born out of the number of cases brought to wto more than 500 cases since the wto was established compared with 300 disputes dealt with during the entire life of gat that is 1947 to 94 they just undertook 300 disputes whereas wto resolved more than 500 disputes how does the wto monitors the trade the world trade organization trade policy review mechanism is designed to improve transparency to create a greater understanding of the trade policies adopted by wto members and to assess their impact many members see the reviews as constructive feedback on their policies all world trade organization members must undergo periodic scrutiny each review containing reports by the member concerned and the wto secretariat in addition the wto undertakes regular monitoring of global trade measures initially launched in the wake of financial crisis of 2008 This global trade monitoring exercise has become a regular function of World Trade Organization with the aim of highlighting World Trade Organization members implementation of both trade facilitating and trade restricting measures. How 
ट्रेड कैपेसिटी इज बिल्ड इन डिवेलपिंग इकोनमीज विद द हेल्प ऑफ वर्ल्ड ट्रेड ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ओवर थ्री क्वार्टर्स ऑफ डब्ल्यू टी ओ मेंबर्स आर डिवेलपिंग और लीज डिवेलप्ड इकोनमीज ऑल डब्ल्यू टी ओ अग्रीमेंट्स कंटेन स्पेशल प्रोविजन्स फॉर दैम इंक्लूडिंग लॉन्गर टाइम पीरियड्स टू इम्प्लीमेंट कमिटमेंट्स मेजर्स टू इंक्रीज देयर ट्रेडिंग ऑपरचुनिटीज एंड सपोर्ट टू हेल्प दैम बिल्ड द इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर नीडेड टू पार्टिसिपेट इन द वर्ल्ड ट्रेड अ डब्ल्यू टी ओ कमिटी ऑन ट्रेड एंड डिवेलपमेंट लुक्स एट डिवेलपिंग इकोनमी स्पेशल नीड्स its responsibility includes implementation of the wto agreements technical cooperation and the increased participation of developing economies in the global trading system the aid for trade initiative launched by wto members in 2005 is designed to help developing economies build trade capacity enhance their infrastructure and improve their ability to benefit from trade opening opportunities so far over 340 billion us dollars has been disbursed to support aid for trade projects a global review of the initiative is held every 2 years at the wto's headquarters the enhanced integrated framework that is eif is the only multilateral partnership dedicated exclusively to assisting least development countries that is ldcs in their use of trade as an engine for growth sustainable development and poverty reduction the enhanced integrated framework partnership of 51 countries 24 donor 24 donors and 8 partner agencies including the wto works closely with the governments development organizations civil society and academia the enhanced integrated framework has invested in over 170 projects with 220 million us dollars committed to supporting the poorest countries in the world another partnership supported by the wto is the standards and trade development facility set up to help developing economies meet international standards for food safety plant and animal health and access global markets the wto houses the secretariat and manages the stdf trust fund that is the standards and trade development facility trust fund which has provided financing of over 40 million us dollars to support projects in low income economies how wto extends technical assistance and training the wto organizes hundreds of technical cooperation missions to developing economies annually It also holds many trade policy calls each year in Geneva for government officials. Regional seminars are held regularly in all regions of the world with a special emphasis on African countries. E-learning courses are also available. In 2017, some 18,500 participants benefited from WTO training aiming at improving understanding of WTO agreements and global trade rules. what have been the advantages and disadvantages of the world trade organization the history of international trade has been a battle between protectionism and free trade and the wto has fueled globalization with both positive and adverse effects the organization's effort have increased global trade expansion but a side effect has been a negative impact on local communities and human rights proponents of wto particularly multinational corporations believe that the organization is beneficial to the business seeing the stimulation of free trade and a decline in trade disputes as beneficial to the global economy skeptics believe that the wto undermines the principles of organic democracy and widens the international wealth gap they point to the decline in domestic industries and increasing foreign influence as negative impacts on the world economy 
as part of his border attempts to renegotiate re U.S. international trade deals when he was in office, President Trump threatened to withdraw from the WTO, calling it a disaster. A U.S. withdrawal from the WTO could have dis disrupted trillions of dollars in global trade. However, he didn't withdraw from it during this time in office. These are the references. Thank you for listening.